Hey everybody, it's me, Gregor Manorino, and welcome to my newest segment of Markets A Look Ahead. It's going to be an interesting one, uh, I believe. You know, I don't rehearse any of this, it just comes flying out of my brain. So we'll see what, uh, what comes out of my mouth. It is uh, Sunday, October 7th, 2018. Let's start off with, again, the basics. Let's look back at the week we just had. It is no secret that we have seen moves in this bond market that rattled the stock market. The dollar too is that flying the ointment we got to keep our eye on. The mainstream financial channels were referring to what we saw. This is not my words, this is theirs. Uh, in the bond market as a bloodbath. However, if you do notice, not a peep not one single syllable about, well, who's doing all this selling? Who's dumping all these bonds onto the market? I've outlined this for you at length, and you already know who it is. I mean, all you need to have is a couple of functioning brain cells, and you know who it is. It's the biggest player on the planet, besides the Federal Reserve, holding U.S. debt. This is China. Look, let me put another perspective on this for you. If you notice, over the past several months, China has been blamed for, well, number one, their massive military buildup. This is no secret. They're being blamed for espionage here in the United States, spying on corporations, stealing uh, corporate information. So, I mean, there's a lot going on here with regard to China. Uh, and if any of you out here, and I, I've heard from a bunch of you over the weekend that think that I, that my, my theory uh, with regard to China meddling in, in our markets is just not true, well, you're deluded. That's another thing. China's being blamed for meddling in our elections. You, so you believe that China, let's see, is meddling in our elections, or think they are, uh, absolutely building up their military, there's no doubt about that, regardless of how loudly uh, President Trump has been screaming about telling them not to do it, well, they're continuing that, they've been stealing corporate information, uh, I mean, you could go on and on here. So if you believe that China is not messing with our markets, and in fact, I put it this way, I said they're kind of like puppetizing our market, you'd have no idea of what's going on here. This is the trade war that is escalating into some kind of an economic warfare against our market. So with that said, before we go look at any charts on my lovely website, which I want to do, understand, in my opinion here, China is going to be a major factor or an outside factor that we are going to have to examine when we are looking at these markets and they're also a major risk. I'll go as far as to say this. China is the number one risk to our markets at this time. Now, we all understand this. Early last week, uh, and this might have been the triggering event as to what happened in the bond market. Mike Pence, Vice President, uh, came out pretty strongly against China. A couple of days later, bam, actually two days later or one day later, we started seeing this sell-off in, in the bond market. And again, President Trump has gone radio silent on this. I think what's happening here, look, here's the, here's the truth. China does not want to melt down our markets. They need us. We need them for trade. But, they want to spook our markets just enough that our president, you know, kind of backs off a little bit and decides to maybe come to the negotiating table without pushing all the rhetoric. You understand? Rhetoric never works. It's, it's, it's just, you know, it works for a certain group of people that are brainwashed, that want to hear it. He's playing to his base. All politicians do this, and it's... It's kind of laughable, but there are those who are so malleable that they, they just fall into things. They're like lemmings, you know, and whatever they're told, they just believe. It's, but this is, <laughs> this is what has been going on since, again, almost time immemorial. There's a certain group of people here that uh, 
Well, whatever. With that said, so, again, in my view, at least here in the short run, um, it is China that is the main risk to this market. And this is going to depend a lot on rhetoric coming out of Washington um, with regard to the trade wars. Now, we all understand, and I do believe that this is true, what I'm about to say, and I just covered some of this. I have no doubt that China did meddle in the elections, is absolutely uh, stealing corporate secrets here, from here in America. They are spying on us. They are building up their military, regardless of, uh, of how they're being told not to do these things. So China is trying to make a statement here. Um, and I believe a lot of this is kind of a, like I, I explained to you, what we're seeing here in the markets is a language. Uh, China is using our markets to kind of tell our president back off with regard to these tariffs. Let's talk. That's what I think is going on here. All right, so let's let's uh, go over to my website, TradersChoice.net. There is a link in the description of this video. We're going to look at some charts. I'm going to show you my newest positions, all credit spreads. So let's go over there now. I'm going to open up the page. All right. Here we are, my lovely website. Anyway, <laughs> let's go all the way down here uh, and look at this gauge. Now, I want to talk about this gauge a little bit. Um, over the past two weeks, this gauge here, two weeks in a row, has been wrong. Uh, we're getting a buy signal here still. Um, if you look a little deeper into this, we got two indicators. This, this is a technical analysis of the S&P 500 over a week. So let's not just look at the gauge itself, but let's decipher some of this. We have two sell signals, nine neutrals, and 15 buy signals. Okay, all well and good. Again, this is only looking at technical factors. Let me explain this to you if, uh, in case you don't know. You, there are a lot of people out here that are purely technical traders. Now, that is not the right perspective to have. You can use, and I've explained this forever now, technical analysis, like we're going to look at a few charts here, as a tool. These are tools, like, and you should have more than one tool in your box. Unlike the Federal Reserve that only has one tool in their box, and that is debt, or how they can rig it one way or the other, a technical chart is a tool, one tool. You need to factor in all of these other things like we're discussing. China, for example, geopolitical events, other things have to be factored into your strategy as a trader or as an investor. You understand? And you can't just look at the stock market chart. You have got to, and I can't stress this enough, and you know this if you follow my blog. If you're, not, if you're a trader, or believe you are a trader, and you're not following the bond market, number one, and the dollar, probably number two, you are lost. You're like, you know, sailing without a rudder. This is a fact. So with that said, let's go to the chart right above here. This is my trading chart, uh, SPX. I want you to click on this, okay? Left click on it, and then I want you to scroll up so we can kind of magnify this chart. You can do all kinds of things with this chart. As you can see, if you look all the way to the right, we had a little bit of a sell-off, quite obviously, but look at the trend. The trend is still up. You understand? Um, you know, while we're on this chart, I want to talk a little bit about gold and silver. So where it says SPX, let's put in GLD, enter. While you still have it magnified a little bit. If you don't have it magnified, again, click on it, scroll up. You can see now, over the past several weeks, this is the paper derivative of gold. And I believe me, and I explain this all the time, this is not real, it's not on the elemental chart. However, it kind of does string along the price of actual physical gold. Very, it's, it's, it's a bizarre scenario. There should be two markets, if you ask me, but 
There's not, and we know why. So if you look at this here, we've been kind of bottoming out here for a while here. This, this may mean, um, and I've been talking about this, that we're going to see a run higher here with regard to at least the derivative. But they can do whatever they want. You know that. I've covered this. They can dump as much paper as they want. It's not real onto the market to keep the price suppressed. Let's look at the paper derivative of silver. Let's put in SLV. Ready? SLV. Enter. All right. Silver here really does seem to be moving up. It's catching a bit as of late. Very nice. Again, we'll, we'll need to keep our eye on this. This could be a tell here that maybe the market is uh, wanting to not take on so much risk, the stock market. Now, speaking of that, we're going to look right over here to the lovely bond market chart. Now, look at this bond market chart. This is just over the past day or so, a massive sell-off, then they started buying. It's unbelievable, it really is. Every time they start to buy, stocks rebound. Uh, I mean, this is a phenomenon that we've been seeing for quite a while. Prop up those bonds, prop up those bonds. Incredible, it really is. Now, let's go down lower and look at that dollar chart. Look at that green, all that green over there. That was the dollar getting stronger. When the dollar started to weaken Friday, did you you could have watched this live in real time. It's it's unbelievable. As soon as the dollar started to weaken on Friday, stocks reversed. I mean, we still finished in the negative. However, the Dow Jones Industrial Lovely Average was down 325, 326 points at the low when they started propping up, propping up those bonds, as you can see right there in that stinking chart. And right below that, when the dollar started to weaken, what happened? Stocks reversed. The Dow Jones Industrial Average finished down only 180. It's an incredible thing. It's an absolutely incredible thing. Now, what I want you to do here, my lovely friends, really, look at my, uh, my trading chart here. Now look at my credit spreads. Um, these are my newest credit spreads here. Bank of America, Chipotle, Morgan Stanley, and Qualcomm. Um, now if you want to analyze these things here, let's just play with that real quick. You see what we just put in SLV? Now let's put in BAC, enter. All right. Now, been catching a bit here over the past couple of days. Uh, I sold puts here. Again, these credit spreads here, uh, I'm, if, all the negatives are, are what I'm selling onto the market. Now, I do not want, this is how they work, um, I do not want, let's say Bank of America here, to hit the strike price of the puts I sold. As long as it, st it stays above that, I collect the entire premium on every trade. Every single trade of mine that expired on Friday, all of them, I got to keep 100% of the premium. So I did not have a bad week, although a lot of people did because of the way the market sold off. This is the beauty of credit spreads. Anyway, you can do the same thing with all these. You can look at uh, Chipotle, Morgan Stanley, analyze all this. It's not hard. But anyway, all right, enough, enough of all that. Let's just recap some of this here, just so important. In my view, China is the biggest risk to our stock market right now. Monday, tomorrow, the bond market is closed, so there takes one element of risk out of the market. However, the dollar is going to trade. If China wants to play with the dollar a little bit, what, what will they do? They'll just stop buying them. If they start buying dollars... Dollars will get strong. The dollar will get stronger. Stock market doesn't like it. The big issue is going to be Tuesday when the bond market reopens. Trading obviously will be going on here. Dollar will be trading too. So I don't even know right now. In fact, I doubt it that I'm going to be opening up any new positions tomorrow. But I'll talk about this tomorrow morning when I do my market report. And I hope to see you there. Anyway. Um, I hope you found this entertaining or enlightening or something and you can make some sense of what's going on. Um, anyway, with that said, my beautiful, lovely friends that I really do love from the heart, I'll see you in the morning. We're going to have all kinds of fun and I'm actually looking forward to it. See you then.